Okay, so 42, it's a probability question with a combination and permutation. So they say that there's nine cans of coffee and three cans of tea. And they want to choose four cans out of these. And they're asking for the probability that there are at least two cans of teas. So since there's only three cans of teas, so actually we will think about What's the probability of getting the two cans to be at least two? So it means there can be two or there can be three. So they can be two or they can be three. Now remember when we're doing probability or means two plus. So if we are choosing two cans of teas, because we are choosing four cans altogether, so two will be teas and two will be coffees. So to coffees, we choose any two out of the nine and multiply with the three cans of teas but we're going to choose two of them so three to two and similarly because I said or is plus right so the other option is to th choose all three cans of tea so how many cans need to be chosen from the coffees so because four cans is needed so we'll choose one from the nine cans of coffee and then when you add that you will divide the whole thing after you plus them by any condition so we have, I don't care what type of cans they are, we have 12 cans altogether. And we're going to choose any four out of the 12 to be our denominator because that's always our total. Okay. And similarly, surprisingly, this paper had two questions very similar. But in this case, they are not asking for probability, they're asking for total different combinations. So they are, they are saying that there are 40 boys and 15 girls, uh, 20 boys and 15 girls, and 16 need to be selected from the class, which consist at most two girls. So they, at most there can be two. So we have two girls, or one girl, or no girl. So if there's no girls, means all of them are boys. So we will choose any six out of the 20. So it's 20 C6. Or if I'm choosing one, so there's one girl out of the 15. So remaining that the five students will be the boys. So out of the 20. Or two girls. If I'm choosing two girls out of the 15, then I need four more people from the boys. So 20 C4. And if you add them, you'll get the answer. For 44, you need to read the question carefully. So they give you a stem and leaf diagram and they say that Ada has got the highest score in the test. So Ada has the highest score. So, because if Ada is the highest score, they are saying that the standard score, so you will need to remember the standard score formula. And to get the standard score form formula, because Ada has got the highest score, so 85 is her score. So we got the score now, but because we got all the data from here, from our calculator, we will be able to calculate the mean and we will be able to calculate the SD. So once we have done that, we could have calculated the answer for B. And the standard deviation also can be calculated from the calculator, because we can do that. And the only thing we need to compare now is the upper quartile. So upper quartile means Q3. They're just asking for Q3. So how many data are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20. Uh, you can do it two ways, either you plus one and divide by two, and luckily this is a number that's divisible by four. You can put them into four separate pale, uh, parts, so it's four, 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 four. So this is Q1, Q2, Q3. So if I want upper quartile, Q3, so I need to look for four, eight, twelve. So I need to look for the twelfth data and the thirteenth data, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there are 4 each. So first, not 4 each, what I'm doing. I'm, this should be 5 each. Some of you would be shouting at the screen right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's your Q2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's your Q1, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's your Q3. So Q3 is 
70. So the upper quartile is 55. That's blatantly wrong because it's not the upper quartile. This is the median. So this is wrong. And then these two, again, I've told you, you can put all the data in. You will be able to get the mean. You'll get the SD. And you can calculate 85 minus the mean over SD. Does it give you lower than 2? And the SD, again, if you press the calculator, you get the answer. And for number 45, you may not have heard of this thing called the variance, but variance is actually simply SD square. Okay, SD square. So they tell you that the variance is 49. So 49 is SD square. Again, to get rid of the square, you put square root on the 49, so you get 7. So at the moment, SD is 7. Now, you will have to remember, SD is the gap between each data. The gap between each data. Okay, how far the gap, uh, the data is from each other. Now, if you add something to the data, to all the data, it just it basically shifts it. It doesn't make the gap larger or smaller. It just shifts all the data together, to the left or to the right. So SD will not change just because uh, by adding something. However, if you multiply or divide something, then it will make it smaller or larger. Okay, so if you multiply something, you will make it larger. So they said they multiply it by 4. So actually, the SD will also multiply by 4. So basically, from the old SD being 7, it will multiply by 4 to get you 28. So this will be your new SD because it's multiplying by 4. And again, when you add or remove something, SD doesn't change. Okay, especially if you're moving, I mean, if you're adding it to every single data, then the SD will not change. Okay, so since they're asking for the new variance, because the new SD is 28, I told you, variance is square of SD. So we need to simply get what square of 28. That's 784. See. 